I mean, I've been dealing with this for two years now. And understanding, like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. I know I'll go down to history. I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watching women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too, and I want y'all to realize that. Like, it's not just because of one person. A lot of us have done so much for this game, and there are so many great players in this league that have deserved this for a really, really long time, and luckily, it's coming now. All right. Monica, <laughs> um, you I love pick this us sound. off. I love this sound by Angel Reese, and I think it is honest. When she speaks about the league, she talks about the collective. And yes, she did acknowledge herself. We talked about the experience of the Chicago Sky game that was streamed on a cell phone and, and thousands of people locked in to watch that broadcast. Two million. We talked about two million. You're right, uh, Shay Shay. We talked about the 3.2 million followers, her Met Gala experience, being able to go to the Met Gala and show up in a preseason game, the numbers that have translated in terms of her ability to rebound for this Sky team. This is an organization that is also finding its way under new head coach Teresa Weatherspoon. And so I love the confidence that Angel Reese operates with, but also in her confidence, there is a mindfulness that's inclusive. And I think that is what is almost true to the fabric of the WNBA. It's not that you can't compete and, and all that. We just had a whole conversation about competition within the parameters of the game. Um, but I think this confidence from a young woman that's been in the spotlight and had all types of things hurled at her uh, for no reason, uh, I think that is a really good sign that she understands the big picture of what is happening in women's basketball. What I love most about what she said is that she's always paying it backwards. She's mm -hmm. always talking about those that came before her. And she understands there are a lot of great players that don't get the opportunities, that didn't get the opportunities that she got to go to a Met Gala that's on television, that have social media, that, that had NILs or, or, or whatever marketing deals were in college, that were very good players that never got an opportunity. They didn't even have a WNBA. And so for her to constantly always go back and to make sure she gives those, and even though if she doesn't mention them by name, we've been around this game long enough to understand who a lot of those women are. I love the fact that she does that. I love the fact, yeah, she is. This is, it goes back, look, it started when Caitlin Clark, when she took down South Carolina, that mythical team, they were undefeated, and nobody thought they were going to lose because, and, and guess what happens? She did that. And then when Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark got together, Guys, I know uh, 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 Monica, you and, uh, and Sinead did not, don't remember this, but this was Larry Bird and this was Magic Johnson. And we know how it's divided. Whether you want to admit it or not, it is what it is. And so we got that. And so you got one side over here, you got one side over there, and they're cheering for whatever reason. Competition goes to spoil. I get to do whatever I want to do. If I want to the hookah dance or whatever I want to do, I'm going to do because I won the ball game. So uh, Angel is absolutely correct. I have no problem with what she said. This rookie class has been amazing, amazing from Caitlin Clark to Angel Reese to Cameron Brink or uh, 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 Rikay Jackson. All of them have been outstanding. And we're watching this, and we're watching the WNBA rise, and I'm happy for it because there are a lot of women that put a lot of hard work and sacrifice in that did not get the credit that they so rightfully deserve. And Shannon, I love that you brought up Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, because if you look at the timeline of growth in the NBA, at that point, the NBA was on tape delay. And it they was. were looking for someone to usher in a lot of growth to the league and also stability. And if you look at the timeline, that was around year 30 of the NBA. And right now we're around year 28 of the WNBA. And we're seeing a lot of the intersections of things that make Women's basketball quite polarizing, while, which might be frustrating to Monica and I who have played it. But the truth of the matter, when you have race, when you have gender, when you have competition, it has created and catapulted women's basketball to this amazing moment for better or for worse. Because sometimes we have conversations like we started off with, but also we have conversations about the growth of the game that matters. And that's why I say, yes, in women's basketball, we have this one supernova star in Caitlin Clark. But there is also in the galaxy a constellation of stars. And one of Absolutely. those that shine the brightest is also I Angel Reese. And she understands her role and she understands what she brings to the game. The way that Angel plays is not perfect. But boy, I talked to my sister who had to play against Angel. And I don't know if y'all saw the highlight. That woman plowed through my sister. My sister's an MVP and a champion. <laughs> she fears no one. She embraces the physicality and she shows up in moments to uplift others. And I think that's great because because I think Caitlin and Angel understand that they need each 
each other to be successful. Yes, Caitlyn is forcing arenas to upgrade all around the WNBA. But Angel is also forcing sellouts. The Las Vegas Aces, the back-to-back -back champions, are forcing sellouts. All growth is good growth. And also, we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, those who did not have the spotlight, but still have provided so much substance to lean on in moments like this. In order to have a successful business, you need to have investment before the moment comes. The investment has been happening by countless players in the WNBA. Now the moment is here, and we want to see that keep moving forward. And I think Angel did a great job of acknowledging that once again. I just want Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese in the, in the, in the WNBA Finals. That's all I hope for. If I get that, I'm hey, if it, that, that might be a, that might be a while. Right, I don't know if you see them standing. <laughs> Stephen A. Um, <clears throat> nothing anybody said is wrong. Um, and in at least a couple of instances, I think Shannon alluded to where I'm about to go. I'm a bit more direct with it. Um, I just wanted to let the audience know that I'm going to stand alone on what I'm about to say. I don't want anybody else to be held accountable for where I'm about to go. But I'm going to go there. Because it's first take. And that's what we do on this show. Even if it's just me. Caitlin Clark and everything that everybody is saying is fine. And we're looking at Angel Reese and what Angel Reese has said. And Angel Reese is absolutely right. I love Angel Reese. I'm a fan. And I think she's going to be a damn good player. and She's going to produce for a long time in the WNBA. She was a national champion. She deserves all the props and all the credit in the world. But let's keep in mind, it wasn't her game that was getting all the notoriety, despite the fact that she was a pretty damn good player. It was the fact that she was waving in Caitlin Clark's face. Because Caitlin Clark had been doing that to the competition before she ran mm -hmm. into LSU. In that, in that NCAA tournament in LS, she took him out. And so what happens is she was throwing it right back in her face. And you had people saying, oh, my God, how could she do such a thing? How could she do such a thing? And they didn't say, and they didn't say the same thing about Caitlin Clark, which is why I'm going to go where I'm going, okay? Let me see everybody up on the screen when I say this, please. Caitlin Clark is white. And because she's white, and because she's considered box office and she's a star who happens to be white, that is why Eminem, when I brought up words like uh, uh, envy or jealous or resentment, whatever word you wanted to pick, I didn't say it in a negative fashion like, oh, my God, it's a problem. I used the word justified. You know why? Because black people throughout this country for years have felt that level of ire, because we know we've got to be half twice as good to get half as much. We know we've got to extend ourselves. We know we've got to put ourselves on front street to have a shot at getting half. Do pick a profession, pick a name, ask yourself, pick the biggest star, pick the biggest star in podcast, pick the biggest star in television, pick the biggest star in sports, whatever. That's black, and ask yourself the question that we all ask: If they were white, what would they be? How much money would we get paid if we were white? How much success would we reap if we were white? How much endorsements would we get? How receptive would America be to us? Because it's still 60% of the population. And even in the year 2024, when the white populace in this country has dipped from 90 to 85 to 80 to 70 to now 60% and dipping, okay, even now, you have a situation where you get somebody who happens to be white and, they, and they're a star and they deserve the acclaim. They receive something we know we wouldn't receive on that level. Why do you think I say on national television when white folks catch a cold, black folks catch pneumonia? Because it's always worse for us. There's always an extra challenge. We always have to go through more. It's not a secret. We get it. And so all I'm trying to say to you is when Angel Reese said what she said, let's read between the lines. Because what she's really, really saying is that this is really not a big deal. We're making it a big deal because of what I did and who I did it to.
If it was another sister that I did it towards, it wouldn't have been a problem. But because my black self did that to the golden goose, who happens to be white, it blew up. I've reaped some benefits from it, and I'll take that. But in the end, we know what it is. She is saying and articulating and being symptomatic of things that we have been going through as a community for decades, if not centuries. And the sad part is, is that in the year 2024, this is further evidence we still going through it. Because in the end, like you said, Eminem, like you said, Janae, like I know you know, Shay Shay, if it wasn't, if we weren't talking about Caitlin Clark, but we yeah, were talking sure. about this happening with a sister, guess what? We wouldn't have been talking about it at all. It wouldn't have been a story. The golden goose was touched. And all I'm saying is, I know this. Y'all know this. I'm just saying, rather than resent it to the point where it's an impediment to our elevation and success, let's exploit it and reap the benefits from it. Because that's what they do. Very to, Stephen A, to Stephen A's point, my, I think, Monica, I think you were on the show mm -hmm. when Alyssa Thompson flipped Angel Thomas. Reese over at the free throw line. Mm -hmm. Thomas. At least with Thomas, excuse me. We ain't leave the show with that. We ain't leave. Wasn't no article in Chicago you know, Tribune ain't, either. Ain't, 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 no, ain't nobody wrote no article talking about this was assault. Ain't nobody did nothing. Be because you know why? What color was Thomas? What color is Angel Reese? Oh, okay. Okay. So we know, we understand. You can be good. You can be good at any game if you understand the rules and know how to play it. Take and it away. And the last point, lady. can I make this point real quick to y'all? Can I make this point real quick to y'all? There's a lot of people that come after us on first take because we're number one, but most importantly, because of the subjects we're willing to attack. Monica and I disagreed with each other a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. I love you, girl. You know that. Mm -hmm. Ditto. I love you too, Chanae. You know that. You know I always got y'all.